freedom for our souls come when we stop judging others on the basis of wealth, education, social status, family connection, race, or age. Look at that. That is so clear. The true seekers of Jesus should find a welcoming fellowship in the church no matter what. Verse 13, for, ye, for, ye, for he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. Jesus is teaching the Lord's Prayer, warned that if we will hold forgiveness, we should not expect God's forgiveness. How about that? Totally different, isn't it? Matthew 6, 14 and 15, Jesus is teaching the Lord's Prayer, warned that if we withhold forgiveness, we should not expect God's forgiveness. What a word. What a word. If you won't forgive, God won't be forgiving you. Isn't it clear? Look at that. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. All right. Let's continue. God will be nice to us if we are nice to others. It is a test of one's heart. In the same way we fail to show mercy, we await judgment without mercy. Let's read that again. Jesus is teaching the Lord's Prayer, warned that if we will hold forgiveness, we should not expect God's forgiveness. Matthew 6, chapter, verses 14 to 15. This is not some bargain we make with God, as though God will be nice to us if we are nice to to others. It is a test of one's heart. The same way we fail to show mercy, we await judgment without mercy. Discrimination, prejudice, and particularly are all types of judging others. When we favor a rich person because of the, her wealth and disfavor a poor person because of his poverty, we make more judgment without mercy. Jesus wants mercy to win the, this battle. He wants mercy to win over, uh, win out, win out in our lives to be shown in the way we treat others. In this way, mercy will overrule judgment. Oh, have mercy. How about that? Powerful there, isn't it? What a word. Conclusion. Two laws. 1,900 years ago, James gave definite answers for how the church should live and behave. James offered three, two ethical foundations, the royal law and the law of liberty, to guide the church. Both of these were learned from his half-brother Jesus. These two laws go together. If we see others as our neighbors indeed, whether they are beloved friends or reviled enemies, we must show mercy, not discrimination. If we set our natural impulse to favor certain visitors, we will find unexpected opportunity to share the love that wells up in our heart. We should lead with love, never doubting God's willingness to show kindness to us. We must show mercy, not discrimination. Okay? Show mercy not discrimination. Churches should practice self-examination using these complementary laws. What things do we do that favor certain people over others? Do our church leaders represent the diversity of our church body? Or are they predominantly well-off, financially well-educated, and a certain ethical that does not respect the whole? This, it is our congregation known as loving place or a judgmental place. Which one is your congregation? You know for yourself. Which one? Judgmental? Judgmentally? Or a loving place? Which one are you? Our answers to these questions will help us see as a congregation how we measure up to the standards of the two laws. Jesus did not treat people according to divisions of wealth and poverty or perceived blessings or curses. Jesus' brother did not either. Instead, James and Jesus showed that God loves the poor, and we should too. This issue has not gone away in nearly 2,000 years since James were, and 
we do well to listen to him today. James wrote, This issue has not gone away in nearly 2,000 years since James wrote it, and we do well to listen to him today. How about that? Our closing prayer for today. Father God, you created all people. You did not create us to discriminate and hate, but to love and accept others. You have loved us without partiality. May we love you in return and show this as we love others who cross our path. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A thought to remember, begin with love. Begin with love. This will end this uh, series that we've been uh, working on for the last several weeks here. Um, this is Lesson 9 through 13. Godly love among believers, love for one another. This is, can, can, will conclude Unit 3. We'll begin a new unit uh, on, the, on, on the next Sunday. Uh, this is called, in the New Testament, the Lesson Unit 1, the beginning of a call. Call to be heirs. That's what our lesson will be for December 6th. Call to be heirs. All right. We hope everything is going well for you. No matter what that situation is, you know who to go through. Call on Jesus Christ. On behalf of all of us here at Antioch, we thank you for listening to the Sunday School this morning. Be blessed. Take care now.